Welcome back to the Sports Source. You see there, Tennessee's last five bowl games in the Sunshine State. They're 5-0. and oh. They have not lost in the state of Florida during a bowl game, of course. They've lost at the Swamp a few times, but haven't lost in a bowl game in the state of Florida since 2007 when, I keep going, every time there's a bowl loss, it's Penn State. Penn State beat them in the 07 Outback Bowl, but since then they've beaten Wisconsin, Iowa, Northwestern, Indiana, and of course last year they won the Orange Bowl against Clemson. This Citrus Bowl fact brought to you by Safety Systems. Call VFL J.J. Surlis and his team today to install or upgrade the security system in your home or at your business. All right, what is the game plan, Bob Hodge? If I'm Tennessee, I'm going to come out against that defense and I'm going to try to go vertical on them because, as Will pointed out earlier, you're not going to go side to side on these guys. So the, the horizontal passing game I don't think is going to get you very much. Um, from what I've been told by people who follow Iowa, they are a great tackling defense. So you're not going to get that, oh, he slipped a couple of tackles and made seven, eight yards Again, on a only, pass behind line of scrimmage. Yeah, only eight plays all, all year of 30 yeah. yards or more, which speaks so, to great tackling. So, so I am going to try to beat them over the top. Hopefully I do have a speed advantage, which I don't think Tennessee is particularly fast on offense. So that would be my game plan. Come out and try to go vertical. My, my game plan is not to make Nico a drop back passer and let him do what he does. Uh, I'm going to get him out some. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, this is a game I think the tight ends can be his security blanket against a Big Ten defense like that. We saw in the Ole Miss game against Penn State, the wide receivers did not have a catch until a minute in the fourth quarter. Your tight end is the guy on some of the quick stuff and some of the delay stuff that you can get. Three and out is not a terrible thing against this defense. And, I, I, and, you, and right. obviously, John, your big thing, turnovers, you've got to take care of the ball. But let Nico get out of the pocket, even if he's just working a third of the field, and make some of those throws and get in rhythm. I, I, I think it's tempo. I think you go tempo, yeah. tempo, tempo, tempo. And if it doesn't work the first three drives and we were only on the field for 35 seconds, you can't panic and get out of that. I think if you're Josh Heupel, stick with what got you there at some point in time. They'll make a mistake somewhere. You don't need a ton of points to win this game. I also think the place where you attack Iowa's defense is middle of the field, 8 to 10, 12 yards. You're probably not going deep middle, but you can hit them in the middle of the field if you can get some crossing routes, tied in down the seam, things like that, like Chuck was talking about. To me, that's how you attack this defense, and I don't think they're good enough to take advantage of your defense being gassed offensively. At times this year, there were times, lots of times this year, where it didn't look like they trusted Joe Milton to throw that ball over the middle. Yep. Yeah. Will they trust a true freshman to go out there and throw the ball over the middle at all. I had told you uh, last week if Milton were playing, I would just take advantage of his huge arm. You know, that's the thing. You're going to need, if you hit a couple, yeah. Uh, yeah. throw 10 deep balls. If you hit two, you win. Yeah. Against this, this offense that you're going on the other side of the field, I think you win uh, because they're going to be able to put 14, 20 points on you in theory. I'm worried, though, about doing that with Nico. Now, Iowa doesn't have a great pass rush. Tennessee, we'll show you here later, maybe in this segment, we'll show you that uh, Iowa's pass rush not as good as Tennessee's. But still, Tennessee's offensive line's a little shaky, a little, a little mixed up this week. It's not the same guys you've seen all year. I'm a little leery of asking him, as Chuck said, do, do I want to make him the deep ball drop back guy? I probably would stick with that because that's what I was going to, that's the shots I was going to try and take with Milton. But it does change my attitude. Milton is a hoss. If he gets hit, that's one thing. Nico is a stick. I don't know if I yeah. like the idea of him standing back there taking shot after shot, Garantano style, or Garantano, yeah. however he <laughs> yeah. changed it, yeah. uh, if, he, if, it, if it comes to that. And it's almost like if, if you're moving the pocket, not just moving the pocket, but letting him get outside, get what you can, get out of bounds. Get out of bounds and get down. Don't be going down the middle of the field trying to take on some of that. Their middle linebacker has like 155 tackles. I was Higgins is his last name. He's a stud, man. You want to you want to use your speed. And I think Tennessee can hit him on some slants and some of that same stuff. Keaton has got to step up. He, and it's, it's his last you, game. He's he's a, he's big to me in this one too. You need White and Keaton to have exactly. their best yeah. games. Yeah. Exactly. They need to make up for a lot of – and play this year. If, you're, if your advantage is speed, then you got to cash it in. And in defense, just don't give up anything big. You know, okay. and, and, and to me, this is where Jalen Wright hurt you, not having Jalen Wright. What yep. was he? Yep. Between the tackles, I'm going to get five, six, seven yards. I can carry people. 
I always cringed a little bit when they tried to use Dylan Sampson yeah, we in that yeah, role. Yeah. So now is the freshman the guy that you bring in and we're going to try to run it right at him between the tackles? Well, can you sprint out Dylan Sampson like you did early in the year and maybe beat those linebackers? Their linebacking core has more tackles than any other linebacking core in the nation, Iowa does it. You mentioned that, Chuck. So that's part of it to me is how do I get them where in space, my speed versus their guys who were technically great, you're probably not running well between the tackles. You're going to have to do it enough to keep them honest but try to beat them with things to the outside, kind of what Texas did to Alabama a little bit, I think, as well, where receiver goes deep, wheel right underneath it, and try to catch their linebackers in coverage. Okay, let me take, uh, let me show you some areas where it could be a hidden edge in this game. We mentioned a few of these things earlier. On the year, Iowa number five in the nation in terms of penalty yardage, only 30 yards a game against them. Tennessee, number 130 out of 133. 40 yards difference. All right, you want to help out their offense? Yeah. Give them free yardage. So the penalty thing is one thing to watch. I mentioned this earlier, Tennessee much better in the turnover game, but now you got two freshmen that are going to be handling the ball more. Does that even out here? But Tennessee is, you know, plus seven compared to Iowa, plus three and minus four, so they're plus seven over Iowa on the year. Punt returns. Tennessee much better in the return game, much, much better in the returns uh, coverage game. Is there an edge there? Could could Tennessee make a play in the punt game that makes a difference here? And then I mentioned the sacks. Tennessee, more sacks than Iowa, fewer sacks allowed than Iowa. All things to watch. When we come back, more hidden keys, intangibles. What other things could matter in this game? We'll discuss that, and then we'll get into our predictions, and we'll tell you what the spread's been doing. It's been moving. Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs> 